What's up? What's up, beautiful people? I hope you're all doing well out there. We are live here now to talk about the uh, weekly energy report from March 27th to April 2nd of 2023. Can you can you believe it's already at the end of freaking March? Um, I'm super stoked about it because, you know, the weather's getting warmer. And, you know, like for me, when we get to the springtime, like I can feel the energy. Like I can feel like it's like time to wake up, you know, come out of, you know, hibernation mode, right? Uh, so wherever you are, you know, in, in the world, in the States, I hope that you're doing really well. Um, you know, we got some pretty intense energies uh, going on. What's up, Long Beach? Uh, we got some pretty intense energies going on right now. Big ass solar flares hitting us big time. We're seeing this out in the world stage and everything we're seeing on the world stage is a re reflection of what's going on within each and every one of us. Because let's face it, since 2020, <clears throat> we've all become empaths. All right. It just matters on how long or how well you're able to connect to it to see how to work with the energy. Um, and this energy right now, this week in particular, um, we have two transits that are going to be pretty big. And the universe is really saying this right now, like, get out there, go get it, step into the fear of the unknown and connect to new potential, new possibilities, new opportunities. OK, um, and, you know, Saturn now in Pisces, you know, is trying to like put structure to water. So there's this very new feeling, you know, on one end, it can feel a little overwhelming. Actually, scratch, I can feel very overwhelming. Things are going to be coming at us like, you know, almost like, you know, Jenga, right? You guys know that game Jenga. So, you know, you're trying to build this thing and we sort of where we're building this foundation but at the same time as we're building it we're like oh nope this piece can go over here and this piece is going to go down here so we're kind of playing jenga while we're building the jenga if that makes sense made sense in my mind i hope, <laughs> I hope it makes sense for y'all um <clears throat> but you know we're in airy season so it's like we all want to get up and go and make something happen you know you know, for me, like in the fitness and spiritual world, it's like, let's get our etheric and our physical body right so that we can, you know, have our have our energy nice and, you know, high vibe for 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 the summer. And we want to be feeling good physically and and emotionally and mentally as well. Right. So um, I'm super stoked because I got a lot of really good things coming down the pipeline for all this work that I'm doing here now in Phoenix. If you're around the Mesa area, come down and check out um protege gym healing pathways doing some really cool new stuff you know in blending the you know physical fitness with the emotional fitness with spiritual fitness um we have our first official event tonight really excited to get this started so um thank you all for those of you that show up and for doing the work and for coming down and supporting and all that fun stuff all right but <clears throat> as far as uh today the 27th of march all right wow isn't that crazy? 27th of March. Um, we are now coming into the last, like we, we're less than a month away of finishing up this 18 month eclipse cycle. Uh, so as we're coming to the end of it, we're seeing the new beginning. It's almost like the light at the end of, uh, end of the tunnel is here. We're like sitting in it and we're seeing all these new things and all these new potentials and all these new opportunities coming our way in particular Okay, Lily, right now, okay, on the 27th at 5.08 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, which apparently is actually the same as Pacific Standard Time. They did a reading, um, you know, earlier, and uh, and they were they they were in Cali, and we're in the same time zone. I'm so confused. What's the point of the whole, you know, time difference? Why do we have to have that? I mean, time doesn't really exist anyways, right? So, oh, it's neither here nor there. I just, you know, felt like sharing that. It's very, very confusing to me. Um, apparently Arizona is the only place in the United States that like, it's like everybody sets their time around us over here. Right. So I'll let's get on the same page. Um, <clears throat> but we have the sun at seven degrees of Aries, Chiron at 15 degrees of Aries, Mercury at 17 degrees of Aries and Jupiter at 18 degrees of Aries. So Mercury just conjuncted Chiron. So Mercury is bringing up communication like we're get we're in our mind we're cerebrally seeing and understanding this deep wound 
Um, and now it's coming up to Jupiter and it's all sort of meshed and mixed together. So it makes it really big. It makes it really vulnerable. It makes it really intense. And this is where forgiveness is really important for the self boundaries, learning where it's sort of like we're being shown where the leaks are in our energy to plug the leaks. Okay. And as we plug the leaks, you know, like, ah, I should have known, or, ah, I knew I acted too fast on that, or I felt this, but I didn't know how it was going to move into this, right? Like all these weird little pieces and parts that are teaching us these lessons um, are coming into our conscious awareness so that we can receive them, integrate them and grow from them and let them go. And, you know, grow because look, the next two and a half years with Saturn and Pisces is going to give us an opportunity to either fully feel the full expression of our feelings as they're coming up to be cleared out or fully suppress them and live in a, dis that's where the dystopian um, sort of potential can happen, right? If we're getting caught up in the distraction and the avoiding of the feelings, I don't want to feel that. I'll do that later. Now, 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 um, you know, that stuff's going on. And then we get addicted to whatever process that is of the detachment of the escapism. And it's going to be a collective thing. There's going to be a lot of, you're going to see groups of people like the whole herd mentality, the, the whole group think is going to be very, very palpable. So we have to make sure this is where we stand in our sovereign nature to source, to God, to great spirit, to the Holy Spirit, to whatever you want to call it. Okay. But mind, heart connection, staying connected and honoring, um, you know, who we are at our highest vibrational good so that we don't fall internally victim to the hive mind uh, distraction or dystopian aspect. So this is really, we're getting pulled. The universe, you know, God is pulling us, showing us these beautiful opportunities, but we must face the thing that's uncomfortable. We can't, we can't run away from it anymore. We can't escape it. Okay. So it's saying, you know, like right now, you know, Mercury, okay. You got to look at your shit, dude. It's like, you know, Mercury's like, all right, guys, come on, let's go. Look at your stuff. Be honest with yourself. Stop projecting. Stop creating drama. Stop creating stories that are not supporting your highest vibrational good. And when you do that, hey, here's the prize, right? Like it's, it's sort of like punishment reward, you know, is becoming more and more evident from the universe. So, you know, believe in the reward, as opposed to the punishment. Now, of course, there's still, you know, there, there's there's always going to be to some degree or extent a reward and punishment punishment system. It's all it depends on our perspective on that. So when we have something happen, right, the punishment is just a lesson. The reward is just what we're manifesting. Okay, so when you can switch it like that, you see and you realize that this is all, it's, it's literally a game inside your freaking mind. It's a game inside this construct of learning how to be um, a little more, you know, consciously detached from your emotions. Now, that does not mean don't be emotional, okay? Because Mars is now in Cancer. We're going to be emotional as fuck here for the next, you know, at least six weeks. <clears throat> in fact, today, the moon is conjunct Mars. <laughs> so, you know, that's a lot of frustration and rah, right? But... With um, with the deep emotional stuff that's going to be coming up and coming through, uh, we have to be able to uh, channel the emotional energy to be able to move through us. And look, it's going to be a little bumpy, okay? Like there's a lot of energy moving through us. And there's a lot of growth happening. So at the end of the day, like, you know, love yourself, love the people that you're around and don't hold on to grudges. Like if you get an argument, ah, you know, I'm just, I got a lot of stuff coming up, you know, now that's one side of it. On the other side, don't take no shit. Like don't let anyone disrespect you or take you down or control you or manipulate you. The real, the real big thing we're going to see here is the battle between the narcissist and the empath, right? The, the, um, the gaslighting and the empathy, like we're, it, it's going to get to a point where it's almost palpable. Like you can feel the energy moving in between people when they're connecting and communicating. So as we're, you know, looking at a deeper level from within, 
um, you know, we are looking at ourselves in or as a reflection of other people and, um, you know, stepping into this, uh, this more complete part of who we are, this solar eclipse that is coming up is literally birthing. Like, you know, like we're, we're, we're ending a 18 month, uh, you know, lunar cycle, uh, or nodal cycle, I should say. And ever, so every 18 months is like, there's a certain, there's a certain pocket of karma, I would say that we're learning and going through. Now, karma is not good or bad is what we do with it. Right. But depending on how old you are, you know, um, we're definitely getting some good karma coming back to us. And then, but when the good karma comes in, what do you do with it? Are you going to build with it and create something even better and better and better and more? Or are you going to sit back, you know, go back into the self-sabotaging and, you know, destroy it, right? And it's going to happen fast. Either way, it's going to go bam, 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 bam. So it's important to be, you know, slightly, you know, like try to take a sit, a, t try to take a seat back and be a little more objective, now, we can't be completely objective because we are in and of ourselves subjective beings, right? But being able to be more like obs obs being the observer, the conscious observer of our thoughts, of what's going on around us, the, the more that we can observe what's going on in here, the more efficiently we'll be able to navigate what's going on out there, okay? Because our energy is highly dictating what's going on out there. So we are literally creating our reality and, and it, it hasn't been so super obvious, you know, up until really 2020, but since 2020, it's gotten stronger. And now the beat is about to step up to another level. So this, this pace, it's, it's almost like a pace or like a, the, the depth of the connection of the energy between the etheric and our physical reality is getting closer and closer. You can feel it. It's like, it's almost tangible. You can almost, you can almost taste it. Right. And so we want to be able to connect with that in the most, in the most authentic way possible. And we want it to flow as efficient as possible. And with that flow, comes like we will manifest things so fast in a positive way or a negative way okay so the key is a lot of us a lot of people out there kind of do a little bit of both there's a big huge gray area there's a small pocket of the light and a small pocket of the dark and then there's a 90 percent in the middle okay so we need to continue to go towards the light because the light is where our heart wants to go. It's just a matter of being able to like believe that we can handle it. Number one, number two, stop trying to control it. All these, all, all these patterns of behavior that, you know, were there that for our entire lives, all right, that were tricking us. It's bringing up all of our trauma. It's bringing up all of our even past life stuff, even ancestral stuff. Okay. So don't try to figure it out. When, when emotions are coming up, I don't know why I'm crying. I don't know why I feel the way I feel. I don't know what's going on. I feel weird. I feel strange. Go do something productive. Take that energy and put action into it and make something happen for yourself that you know is good for you or else the default will be the reactivity of going into what's not good for you. And that will be like tumbling down the rabbit hole, right? And we don't wanna do that. So we have to be very careful about how we, um, you know, we have these massive, huge you know, opportunities here and these great energies and they're very powerful, but the more powerful with great, with great power comes great responsibility, right? So this great responsibility, we're seeing it and it's, it, it can be a little feeling of like overwhelm, like, holy shit. Okay. I got to step up. I got to make things happen. I got to get out there and I got to do this and I got to have that. And I got to, I got to be this in, in a world that where I have no foundation under my feet and everything is uncertain. It's requiring me to trust and have faith. And with that faith, comes the blessings that you truly deep down in your heart believe that you know you deserve okay the fear is going to clear out though 
And this is the process in which we do this. Now, expect the unexpected this week as well, because, of course, on the 30th, to be exact, we have Venus that's going to be conjuncting Uranus in Taurus. So at, at, at 16 degrees, now, six plus one is seven, right? So angel number seven, um, that's pretty powerful. And uh, not to mention, too, that at the exact time, interestingly enough, when Uranus and Venus are conjunct, um, the moon will be at zero degrees of Leo, uh, opposed Pluto at zero degrees of Aquarius. Hmm. Um, so I just noticed these things. And because there is that, you know, that still kind of loose, but getting stronger square of Pluto to the nodes, there could be a massive blessing coming into your life this week. Are you going to recognize it? for what it is or is it going to look like a challenge or is it going to like whatever presents itself to you this week okay it has the capacity to change your life now what do you want your life to look like and is your is your vision of your life in alignment with what your action is doing in your day-to-day -day life that's what you have to ask yourself okay because if there's what whatever part is out of alignment, it's going to shake that up and it's call it's going to call that out. That's what Uranus does, and Venus is how we receive, right? And we're looking at the future here. We're coming into you know I just did the uh, I just did the April monthly energy report, and um, you know this is sort of like the theme of the month because all these planets now, all these personal planets, which are like out here, you know. It's almost like we're like bloop, like from from the etheric to the physical bloop, like birthing these new these new chapters, these new things, these new opportunities, these new ways that we've been praying for and asking for. Um, it's just a matter of believing it, receiving it, and and not fucking it up, right? So that could be with a relationship. That can be with that could be literally with anything. I mean, and with Pluto now in Aquarius. The unconventional is going to win the day, meaning that, you know, creativity and like, well, this system doesn't work anymore. How about we try this or how about we try that? Now, when we try this or that, it needs to be functional. It needs to make sense. It can't just be like just a load of crap everywhere. All right. But it can and will work when you your heart is authentically in it and you channel like, you know, you know, Uranus is really about channeling. Right. And when you're and so if you're channeling from a place of love, boom, that's when magic happens. If you're channeling from any other place, really, um, I mean, fear, like, you know, or frustration or scarcity or anything like that. That's when there's a little learn lesson. And then, you know, you might get a blessing. But so stay centered within yourself. That's the most important part to stay centered and stay focused and allow yourself to receive these blessings that are coming in so that you can start and Step into the life that you want to live because, you know, we all deserve that, don't we? But it all depends on what you believe you deserve. And that is what is what Mercury uh, conjunct Chiron and Jupiter is bringing up. Where within us do we not feel worthy? Where within us do we have these feelings or these belief systems or these things that are coming in that are... I don't quite, you know, know how to receive that or, you know, these, here's this mommy wound, here's this daddy wound, here's all this stuff. Let it all come up and let it all be okay. You know, all the muck, like, chuck it in the fucking bucket. <laughs> That's, you know, it's my motto. Okay. Um, Mars being in cancer is like, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to feel it. Um, but we are. So how are you going to channel that energy into something productive? Go, you know, go work out or, you know, listen to binaural beats, get like, I get on the sound lounge, you know, like um, whatever it is that you need to do for you, you know, you need to look at that within yourself and be, you know, straight with yourself, be honest with yourself. All right, what do I got to do here to feel okay? Who do, like, what direction do I need to go? Um, the biggest thing is like, you know, Watch out for isolating yourself uh, this week, especially with all this magical energy happening. It's this magical energy happening it is it, being an Aries and Taurus is about the self, morals, ethics, values, um, money, 
uh, you know, things that were uh, of value that we're building or creating, things that we see or feel that are valuable to us, emotions that are valuable, you know, people that are valuable, things that are valuable to us, and whatever wounds that surround that are teaching us to, you know, go out there and connect with others so that, you know, we can identify it, clear it out, be vulnerable, be, you know, authentic, be true, and continue to move through and, you know, have a positive outcome. Um, you know, a big part of this, and I keep saying this in all my videos because it's so important to recognize and understand and remember that, you know, Pluto is death and rebirth. And square the nodes, it's facing your fears to step into the next highest version of yourself. We are moving into a new chapter. And this week is bringing us the opportunities. So we're seeing what the next chapter can look like, can feel like, can be like, can be experienced like. All right. And we must take that leap of faith and fully commit to who we want to be, what we want to do, and what we want to create. All right. We must fully commit to that. So whatever it is that you feel that you need to create or commit to, be honest with yourself about it and set up a plan of action to do it. OK, very, very, uh, you know, auspicious energies here. OK, like um, there's a lot of possibility uh, and a lot of potential. But at the same time, you know, we can, you know, like we can do with it. We have free will, right? That's what being a human is all about, having free will. So because we have free will, you know, we can fuck it up. <laughs> and we have to really watch. We have to watch our person, you know, like how we're talking to people. Like, you know, like I've, I know that I trigger a lot of people out there the way that I talk because I just... I have an Aquarius moon um, and I have a yacht going to black moon Lilith in my third house. The way that I communicate or even teach is very triggering because I'm very blunt and I'm very straightforward. And I say, I, I call it like I see it. Right. But that's me speaking my truth. And sometimes I'm not the greatest at that. In fact, when I was a kid, I was such a nervous wreck. I used to have a stutter. Right. So I've actually taken a lot of training. I did, I did, um, uh, what's that um, public speaking uh, group thing? You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, I did that for many years. And, you know, I've I've done public speaking events. I've been a keynote speaker at places, uh, you know, all so that I can, I can have my communication down. That's why I do these videos, right? Because, yeah, uh, Toastmasters. That's right. Toastmasters. Thank you, Life Force Dancer. Um, so, you know, this is why I do these um, things so that I can master these things. Cause you know, I don't, I don't want to trigger people. I just want people to know the truth. I want people to be healthy and I want people to grow and I want people to be, you know, live at, live a happy life. I want myself to have a happy life. That's, that's all I want. Right. You know, and you know, the kind of people that I attract are, you know, like I'm, I am a wounded healer and I attract other wounded healers as well. Um, but you know, with this Chiron energy in Aries, you know, we're all looking at our wounds right now. So it's kind of like, you know, this is the playground. This is the playground that we're in, and this is the the direction that we're going. So we're all in a way, like you know, wounded warriors right now that that need to need to release the wounds, okay? And as we release the wounds, you know, we we rise above. We raise our vibration, we clear it out, and we can literally come into heaven on earth, right? It's So it's not so much like we get, we literally have to undo all the things that we've been doing. And Venus conjunct Uranus in Taurus, especially because Venus rules Taurus, right? Venus is like giving a little shoulder up to Uranus, like, what's up, dude? All right, here's a little, here's a little pat on the back. Here's a little surprise. Hey, good job, guys. Universe is like, good job, guys. You're going in the right direction. Keep going. Keep working, right? While <laughs> while Mercury and, you know, Chiron and Jupiter is like, good job, because I know that, that seeing or knowing or communicating that shit was freaking hard. It was not easy. So here's a little slice of pie, right? 
Now, that slice of pie could be an idea. It could be money. It could be a relationship, love. It could be, you know, like something that's, you know, being made right. Karma is being set right right now um, in our lives. Um, and sometimes that doesn't really look, you know, it, it doesn't look how you expect it to look. And let me remind you, expectation is the root of all suffering. Okay. So however you expect it to go, probably going to go that way <laughs> because it just, our expectations are coming from our ego. We want to see it a certain way. We want to feel a certain feeling. We want to have a certain experience. That's not how it works. The way it works is that we stay true to our heart and allow it to unfold however it unfolds. And, you know, like, as long as you're staying in your heart, you're staying true to yourself, you know, the experience, the process is going to be beneficial. It's going to be positive. All right. Now, sometimes we might need to learn some lessons along the way. Everybody's learning lessons right now, dude. Everybody. Pluto square the nodes is lessons. Lessons on lessons on lessons. Okay. Because Pluto is like, it's timed. It's the, it's the. It's the phoenix rising from the ashes. It's the transformation of soul. It's the activation of spirit incarnate into our physical form. Our spirit is taking over. Okay, so now our, and our ego has to adjust, not to mention we're coming to the end of a nodal cycle, which is a 18-month period of karmic lessons into a new 18 month period of new karmic lessons. So some people might be feeling like, I don't even know who the hell I am right now. And if that's the case for you, that's okay. Cause we all go through periods like that. All right. But if you, if you're really feeling lost, it's because you're too caught up in your ego because your heart makes you feel like you're at home. And when you're in your heart and when you're dry, your driving force is from your heart, you don't give up, you don't run away, you don't walk away, you can't, you go from your heart all out and you make things happen because your heart loves you and you need to love your heart back. And when I say you need to love your heart back, I'm talking about your mind, your ego needs to love what your heart says because your heart is supposed to be in control and we were traumatized as growing up for generations and we were taught that no, our mind is in control and our heart is wrong. No, it's backwards. So we're flipping it back over to start to learn how to live a new way from the heart. Now, imagine for a minute, okay? Everybody in the world started living in their heart. Dude, we wouldn't need police. We wouldn't need governments. We wouldn't need anything because everybody would be able to trust everybody. And when everybody trusts everybody, holy shit, that we can actually have a flourishing society where we're all on the same page, right? But why do why do we get on different pages? Because of greed, because of, you know, individuation, because, you know, one person's idea of the next best thing is different from the next best idea. Like, let's, let's, and Pluto is all about opening the mind, expanding the consciousness, being in this new place of understanding. It's all, now it is a little heady, okay? Like, you know, it's the air sign. I'm an Aquarius moon. So <laughs> I get it. All right. Um, so you need to like uh, sort of like do some level of healthy disconnection in order. It, the healthy disconnection isn't a dis dissociation. The healthy disconnection is so you can observe your emotions and know how to process them in the highest vibrational good for everyone involved so that you can heal the deeper part of the wound. And that is the time that we're in right now. OK, now we still have um, by the end of the week. OK, the sun is at 12 degrees of Aries. Chiron is at 15 degrees. So next week we're going to be having the sun conjuncting Chiron, which is going to be the last big hoorah of moving through this deep core inner child wounding. And as we move through that, then finally, that's like, all right, the last bit is cleared out. Now we feel like we can fully 100%. We no longer have that like parachute on our back or that ball and chain holding us back, right? It might feel a little heavy right now. 
But there are so many layers working right now, it's clearing out so that we can start, boom, running full force into the next chapter of our lives. But these energies are slowly going over all these aspects to make sure, like, are you sure that's what you want? Are you sure that you're doing the right thing? Are you sure that your belief systems, uh, like all the wiring is correct, right? Like if you're an electrician and you do a job, are you sure all the wires are put together properly so that when the house is built, all the electricity works like, you know, you're not going to flip the garbage disposal and the fan's going to come on, right? That's the wiring in our consciousness right now where it's rewiring some shit. And that and that and that trauma is the faulty wiring that's that's you know was put on in our house when we were born. The house is our body. Hopefully you get that. <laughs> so as this rewiring takes place, let it play out. Be patient with the process. This chiron energy is not fun. And depending on what house this is in in your natal chart. Um, is going to depend on where, like where in your life you feel it. For me, it's in my twelfth house. Ooh. So, for me, this is all deep, deep unconscious ancestral fucking shit, and it's not fun. Um, but also, that's why I attract a lot of wounded, wounded people, and you know, wounded healers even, um, because I can feel the deep wounding of the entire collective consciousness, and I just want to help. I have this deep, deep desire, just like I have all these skills that I've accrued over the last 20 years of my life. Let me help you because um, I'm very good at it, right? Uh, my my transiting Chiron uh, life force dancer is in the 12th. My natal Chiron is in the first. So it's, um, you know, in about 10 years or so, I'm going to be hitting my uh, Chiron return. So that'll be fun. Um, but I, I've, done a, I've done enough work on my Chiron. I think that I've made pretty good friends with my shadow. You know, I've sat down with the deepest parts of my, you know, shadow many, 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 many times. We've had many conversations. Um, so, you know, hey, forget about it. It is what it is, right? This is where I'm a, I'm, I'm a hybrid. I'm an anomaly. That's why I come out here and talk about all this weird shit because, you know, I am, I am, you know, everything I've been through has taught me. I, I, I learned through experience and these experiences have been my greatest teacher ever. Um, so just a little recap. Two biggest, um, the two biggest aspects going on this week. We have Uranus uh, conjuncting uh, Taurus here at 16 degrees of um, Taurus. That's going to be um, a pleasant surprise, uh, a huge opportunity coming through. It could be love, money, um, you know, something or, you know, something where you've been sticking your morals and values and then, bam, all right, finally, you know, you're seeing a good karma reward for all the hard work that you did. Um, and Mercury conjunct uh, Chiron and Jupiter, you know, um, that one is like, okay, you're doing the hard work and you're facing your shit and you're feeling those deep feelings and you're, and you're learning the lesson, you know, that's like, you got to see it. Like you're, you're going to see, it. you're going to have the heart. This is like either having a hard, a hard conversation with yourself or having a hard conversation with somebody else. Usually. Um, of course, there are exceptions to every rule when it comes to this stuff, all right? But whatever difficulty that it is that you have to go through this week, it's like, you know, like back in the day, I don't know if I'm aging myself here, but back in the day when you get you used to get like, you know, the, the cereal boxes, they had a prize inside, right? But, you know, I don't know why I never just, you know, put my hand in there and try to empty it out and find it, but I would always have to, you know, wait until I ate all the all the cereal to actually get the prize, um, I guess maybe I just believe in doing it, you know, the way that it was supposed to be done. But it was like, oh my god, I can't wait to get the surprise. At least when I was a kid, you know, come on. But cosmically speaking, it's like, oh man, I got to rummage through all this shit. Oh god, okay. But oh wow, look, there's a surprise there. All right, surprise. Um, and then of course, like we have to integrate the rest of it, you know, next week when when uh when the sun conjuncts Chiron. But after that, it's done. It's done, and then. And then later on in the month, we're going to be having the sun conjunct Jupiter, which is super beneficial. So it's like got a little bit more of the muck to go through. Ooh, it's a little rough, but then bam, surprise. Here's a prize, right? So 
continue to do the work, continue to believe in yourself and what you're doing and continue to, you know, allow yourself to whatever it is, whatever place you're in, in your life right now, if like, you know, for me, I'm building my, my vision that I've had, you know, for my purpose, my, you know, my healing center, my healing and fitness center, right? That's everything to me right now. Comment, uh, uh, put down the comments below. What is your thing that you're working on right now? What is your thing that you want to create that you want to do in your life? Let me know. I'm really curious. Okay. Focus on doing that thing. And then whatever comes up, that's, a, you know, that's maybe a hindrance or teaching you something or an obstacle, right? Let that obstacle be your guide and, 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 and feel into the obstacle and look at it like, Hey, you know, like this is okay because it's teaching me something. It's helping me learn and grow. Like start to look at your obstacles, like they're opportunities for growth. When you can shift your perspective like that. Um, oh, wow. Gavin Thomas traveling cross country right now to pursue making music full time. That's, that's huge. That's definitely walking in faith. Good for you, brother. Um, I wish you blessings and luck with that. Um, see, you know, um, I know a lot of people right now, I've had a, been a lot of people hit me up asking for readings and, you know, and, and, and for work to be done, you know, to be detoxed and cleansed. You know, I get some friends out there in Florida that are like, I just, I need to get the hell out of here. Um, you know, I need to go. Uh, you know, a lot of people are, you know, planning, you know, setting things up to live off grid or to, you know, whatever it is that you feel like this next chapter of your life needs to be like, we're planting the seeds right now, guys. Okay. My plan, I am going to, I'm going to have healing centers all over the world and wherever I have a healing center, I'm going to have a location, probably turn into Airbnb where I can stay there and travel and heal and help people. And, um, you know, and, you know, making money and doing my thing and, you know, helping a lot of people um, because we are now in the time where the meek, the, the humble, the ones that want good things to happen in the world are going to start winning. We start winning now with Pluto and Aquarius. Now, because other people have been in control so long, it may not look that way at first because things are going to have to crumble a little bit, but you're going to see, you're going to see how. The universe, God, great spirit, whatever you want to call it, you know, is going to start handing over to us because the world needs it. it. Needs it bad. Actually, it needs a good. <laughs> All right. So um, that's it for this week's uh, energy report. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you're in the Phoenix area, come on down to Protege Gym in Mesa. I love to work with you and see you and, uh, you know, um, build this community with you. So uh, other than that, I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I'll see y'all on the next report.